Welcome everyone. I have a question for you. Can you imagine a test of two drugs and one drug is a cure and one drug is a dud, but the drug that is the dud is what everyone uses. Can you imagine such a situation? We actually have the somewhat of a similar situation in the field of reading, actually in a lot of different domains, but I want to talk about one particularly easy, fast acting fix today that literally takes a few seconds to teach, but will transform readers. Hi, I'm Dr. Marnie Ginsberg from Reading Simplified, and it's our mission to streamline instruction and accelerate students' achievement. And we're in the middle of a three-part series called Fast Acting Fixes to Boost Reading Achievement. And so tonight is our second session. Last week we talked about an activity called Switch It, which unlocks um, so many different fundamental reading subskills. And today I want to talk about how do we teach decoding? How do we teach the blending of the sounds together? Because I do have a situation where the answer has been made clear and it gets outstanding results, but it's not what's mainstream. So I'm really excited to share that with you today. And thank you so much for being here. Um, we've got Candace and Jennifer and Tara and Elise and Allison and Susan and Anna and Mim and Greg and Angela. We're all so glad you're here. Um, <clears throat> and we'll get started really soon with these fast acting fixes. But first I just wanted to pause because um, tragically today is the day after the Uvalde murders of those children and teachers in a school. And our heart breaks here at Reading Simplified, as I know yours does too. It's just um, beyond the pale to even imagine. And our mission is to make reading available for everyone. It's a civil right, but even more fundamental is just the right to live. And we need to make a change here in this country. Um, those of you who are from other countries may be just baffled. It's really just, uh, just, I don't really have anything, I don't have the words because it's so horrible, but I didn't want to ignore it because many of you are teachers, many of you are parents. I mean, it affects everyone, but our schools need to be safe, right? And then once our schools are safe, we will also have the opportunity to teach every child to learn to read. And that's our mission here at Reading Simplified. So, as Jennifer says, yes, it's just horrifically sad. I'm, I've just said I'm really speechless about it, but I didn't want to ignore it. You, you teachers, you parents, all of our children, they deserve a safe place. So. Now let's get on to something different. This fast acting fix. Are you ready for that? So fast acting fixes. How many of you have seen the, these, these books? The Who Would Win series by Jerry Pallotta. They are very popular or have been very popular with my nephews. Um, he will pit two animals like the killer whale versus the great white shark and then and then talk about their characteristics and then see and and declare a winner yeah um jennifer says yeah the kids love these books so i'm just taking this idea of this who would win and putting it into our reading context are you ready for this <laughs> so when we teach kids to attack an unfamiliar word there are two mainstream choices. There's more than just two, but there are two mainstream, and they've been um, pitted together, one against the other in a research study. And so I wanna ask you if you know who would win. So on the left, our first contender is the segmented phonation, I'm sorry, the segmented approach, where you ask the children to look at a word, say each sound, s, a, and then read the word, sat. 
So we're calling this contender the, the segmented approach. I also call it the sound, sound, sound word approach. Sound, 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 what's the word? Approach. How many of you have seen this in a reading program? This is very mainstream. <clears throat> and this one is our other competitor. Instead of saying each sound separately first, you actually go straight into blending the sounds as you go. Sat. What word? Sat. Here at Reading Simplified, we call this the blend as you read strategy because we are reading the sounds from the very beginning, left to right. It's a very subtle difference. Both of them are, you're looking at the phonics and trying to put the sounds together. But this one starts with segmenting first. So which one of these, don't tell me the winner, which one of these is one that you see the most in reading curriculum? Kelly's already given us a winner. That's awesome. So is Tara. <laughs> so Jennifer says, what, what happens with this? With this one, this approach, s at, and then the kids say turtle. <laughs> the last in, first out. <laughs> yeah, that is true. In my observation, the, the, the segmented or the sound, sound, sound word approach is most popular. That's what programs teach us to do. Um, <clears throat> but this is the winner in uh, the research domain. Okay, so we here at Reasonable Live believe that there has been a winner declared. We call it Blend As You Read. The most recent researchers to study this call it connected phonation or continuant, continuant phonation. It's quite a mouthful. Some folks call it continuous blending. But this one influential paper that was published about two years ago by Gonzalez Frey and Airy and Linnea Airy is really the queen of word identification research. So these two paired up and pitted these two specific approaches to blending together. And this was the winner, the, the one in the blue, the, connect, the connected phonation or continuing phonation or AKA blend as you read. And they noted that Quote, we were surprised that children learned to decode so quickly given that they could not decode non-words on the pretest. So they taught them the one on the left, the segmented, and kids struggled. And then they taught them the one on the right, the blend as you read, and the kids then they said, learn to read so quickly. How many of you have found that to be the case for you? Yeah, Anne says, <laughs> I love it. Uh, her aha is goodbye, tap and blend, hello, continuous blending. It's so easy, it's so quick, and it makes a huge difference. So Greg, if you can put the link for that study from Gonzalez Frey and Ari into the chat, then folks can check out that study. Now that was just one study, so maybe it's not wise in the research world to declare a winner based on one study, but there were other studies that predated that, from mostly from the 80s, a couple different ones. <clears throat> so check out that study, and, and um, even if your reading program does the segmented, it's really probably not a problem to switch over to the blend as you read approach. And we should be clamoring for programs that include the, a program that is based on the, the science, right? And this one is one, a really critical strategy. Now, for, if you have kids who are high flyers and they learn to, to learn to read e you know, easily, maybe neither of these makes that big of a difference. But for those who struggle and those who are dyslexic, this is a big deal. And Diane, her aha uh -huh is, it really works. <laughs> Um, Wendy's asking a neat question. Does this mean we're getting rid of L-Conan boxes? No. Breaking down words into their parts, a la L-Conan boxes, or what we do with build it or switch it activities, those are still good. Those are um, teaching the alphabetic principle. They're teaching the skill of phonemic segmentation, which we do still need kids to have. They're teaching letter sound knowledge and just basic um, encoding or spelling. 
but they're not teaching how to blend left to right. So um, it's a different issue. Let's talk about how to attack an unknown word. When we attack an unknown word, we're gonna use the approach in blue. Cindy says she's been having one of her kinders start with a consonant and vowel, string them together, hold the sounds until they bump into the final consonant sound. I like that. This seems to work well for her. Sweet. Jillian agrees. Sound boxes are important but must be paired with blending. And you do not need to wait for letter sound awareness to coach blend as you read, Emily. Um, they might not be that great at it initially, but you can still get them into it by doing most of the work for them. And it's just the beginning of their awareness of the alphabetic principle. A preliminary activity that really helps with that is build it or switch it, which you can find out more information about in our, on our website. And Greg, if you can find the link for switch it, that's probably good. So let's check out um, <clears throat> an example of the activity in which we teach this approach to blend as you read or connect con <laughs> continuous phonation, continuous blending. We call it read it. Notice all the things that are happening with this activity. The kid can learn the concept of a word. They can learn to phonemically segment. They can learn to phonemically blend. They can learn the concept of the alphabetic principle that our written language is a code for sound. They can learn left to right tracking. They can learn the letter sounds. Most importantly, they're in green. They can learn the decoding strategy to blend as you read, AKA um, continuous blending. And along the way, they'll also learn some spelling. So tonight I wanna to show three examples of read it in action. We're going to show one example of a kindergartner with um, a speech difficulty really quick. It's how you do read it. We're going to show an example from Jennifer Glick, one of our uh, teachers of the year at her school who taught us a variation on this called the mystery word envelope. And then we'll show an example of it in a small group of, of first grade struggling readers. This is also a decoding strategy that can work for your fifth grader or 15 year old who's struggling with reading. Um, this might be easy for them to read the word sat, but can they blend the sounds together in a five or six sound word? Are they prepared to blend by chunk for a multi-syllable word? The same principle that we're, we're guiding our kids to do at the three sound level works for kids on, on up and up and up the levels. So don't think of this as just a beginning strategy. Okay, I love this. Um, Kelly likes to sing the vowels. So I think that you might be doing it something like this. So, okay, go to this sound and I wanna hear you sing it, okay? Sat, sat. It's a lot easier. They don't forget all the sounds that came before. It's not a working memory challenge. They're moving on towards reading real words. Let's dive in and check out those video examples. Remember, this is connect, continuant phonation, AKA continuous blending, what we call blend as you read. It's a strategy for attacking an unfamiliar word, and you're gonna see it in the activity, read it with a kindergartner who had been struggling with reading. Okay. Let's put these sounds together. Okay, what are the first two sounds? Um, put them together. Uh, put all three together. Uh, nice. Okay, great job. You put the sounds together. Now say each sound. Beauty. Okay, let's erase and say the sound. Can I redo this one? Sure. You want to fix your ah? Yeah. Yeah, nice, much sharper. Okay, now erase and say the sounds. So that last step is saying the sounds as you as you erase them. It's another practice of phonemic segmentation, another practice opportunity for letter sound knowledge. S ah. 
that's just a little reinforcement game. But the main thing is to put the sounds together as you go. Did you see how we put the first two sounds together? And sl is really hard. When we have two consonant clusters at the beginning of words, that's super hard. So we put the sl together, and then he put the sla together. That's what we're talking about with blend as you read, a.k.a. Um, connected I'm having trouble with this, aren't I? Continuant phonation. So that was an example of what Gonzales Frey and Ari and previous um, researchers have found as the more effective approach to teaching decoding an unfamiliar word. And we call it um, blend as you read. It's that strategy on the right. <clears throat> and Tangela, that's interesting. She says that's how her te her Spanish teachers, uh, co-workers teach that. Interesting. So now let's check out a variation on this. This is a fun game that Jennifer Glick has developed called the Mystery Word Envelope. And it's just a, a way to reinforce what you've seen. And then as kids un you know reveal the word, they actually see a picture of the word. So it's a check. So check out this, I think this was kindergarten, maybe first grade. Jennifer, you can remind me, I don't know how long ago this is. Um, mystery word envelope, teaching the blend as you read decoding strategy. Okay, detect your camera rolling. What does it say? Bed. Bed, yes, way to go, give me a high five. I love it. Ellie, you're gonna share yours with me? Read it for me, what does it say? Eh, eh, eh. Pig. Eh. Pig. Pig. Pull it all the way out. Let's see. Is you right? It is right. And I love it. You're writing it on your board. Say the sounds. Miss Glick. Miss Glick. Can I pull it out to see what I draw? Yes, you can. Miss Glick. Oh, but that G is backwards. Look. look. Go ahead and look at your card now and have a look at that G. We gotta turn that G around. Okay. Isn't that uh, awesome? Don't you think that the kids are really having a blast? Um, we love that variation. In fact, Jennifer shared more about it uh, on this um, blog post, and you can snag some of those free cards to give it a test ride. So, um, <clears throat> this is a good question, Adrian. Has anyone seen this being adopted by other approaches or programs yet? I think um, Distar taught this way, and it's also in the in the program called 100 Easy Lessons. And most of the programs that are under the phonographics umbrella, like Reading Simplified and F F Sounds Right and um, Ebly, I think they probably use this as well. But it's not very mainstream. That it should be, right? And Wendy, I think this is really a nice point. We're solidifying the learning of the new words by writing it down afterward. This is another way to reinforce phoneme graphing mapping. We read it, we write it, we read it, we write it. It's all reversible. It's going to get it to stick. Build those words into our um, so-called sight words, helping the orthographic mapping process. Oh, that's right, Tara. Thank you. Open Court also taught blending that way. And they also teach, as I recall, sounds the same way we do here at Read Simplified. One sound O can have multiple spellings, O A, O W, O, silent E, etc. <clears throat> okay, now how about an example of read it, the activity, using the blend as you read decoding strategy in the context of small groups. And uh, stick around, because after that we will give out the lesson plans where we're gonna give you guidance on how to roll out read it and roll out switch it which we talked about last week and also the sorted activity which we're going to talk about next week Ooh, okay nicole thank you for pointing that out actually i did see a video of someone using sounds right and they weren't they were doing kind of a act approach so i don't think that's what they'll they should they'll be changing that i bet so if you want to get access to um read it, word cards, or word lists rather, how to do it, and more importantly, how to give feedback. That's one of the things that's really important to us here at Reading Simplified. We challenge our kids to go up here where they're gonna make mistakes, but we close the gap by giving them the right scaffold. And when kids make mistakes with this activity, it's usually just a handful of things that go wrong. 
And so our cues there are gonna be super helpful to you. So now let's check out small group, read it, teaching the blend as you read strategy again. And then we'll give out those lesson plans. And here is um, the read it activity in a small group environment with first graders. Notice how they're doing, you know, the blend as you read strategy and notice also the steps. They read it, then they write and say the sounds, then they erase and say the sounds. And we'll see who's ready to go first. Hmm. You all look ready. Who wants to go first? Okay. Now don't help him. It's my job to help him, okay? Can you put it down so I can see it too? Good. What do you have there? Put the first two sounds together. Claw. Claw. Uh-huh, and hold that ah. Claw. Claw. You got it. Clock. Okay, everybody say the sounds Claw. as they write it. Claw. Yeah, let's write it. Claw. 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 You can do it too. Now let's look at the k. This is the two letter k. Two letter k. Okay. Do you remember how well, how do we uh, we do the erase game? Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay, ready? K. Start oops, start at the beginning. There you go. There you go. Nicely done. Okay. I've got a hand in the air. Don't help him. Let me help him, okay? Put it down here and we can read it together. Now you're being quirky. Let's put those sounds together. Spend. Oh my goodness, that was so fast. Did you hear that? He said spend. I don't need to spend too much money, okay? S Write the sounds and say it. Spend. You, you hear them in your brain. You've got them. Spend. Don't look at theirs. Everybody cover. You hear the sounds. Can I read something? No, okay. cover. Cover and... Mm. You nailed it. Let me see. Can I see your board? Very, so close. You just need the last sound. Spend. Spend. That's great. And let's erase. Ready? Okay. Next time, uh, when you have the word like this, I want you to make sure that you erase from the beginning and say the sounds like this. Watch. You want to do the last two? And we'll see who's ready to go first. So, probably most of you who are here today, tonight, this morning, wherever you are coming from, um, have either tried this before and have an opinion about it, or you haven't tried it. So let me know if you've tried it, what do you think? What's your evidence as a teacher, as a tutor, as a parent? If you haven't tried it, what do you think? Are you gonna try it? Does it seem reasonable? Does it seem feasible? Our idea here with this Fast Acting Fixes series is that it's the end of the year for most of the people in um, the Northern Hemisphere. You don't have a lot of time. Maybe you have um, only a few days left with your kids. Can you try something for five minutes to test it out, see if it makes it a little boost in their achievement, and then have a plan for coming back to the next school year, um, you know, stepping up your PD. Angela, thank you. So now you've got read it. Read it, say it, erase the sounds. Many ways to get the sounds to stick. I love it. And all along the way, teaching the blending uh, strategy, blend as you read strategy, which is the number one decoding strategy. If you can get your kids to learn that strategy, you are on the way. Jennifer says that blend as you read has opened the door to reading for so many of my students. I wouldn't do it any other way. Same. <laughs> um, and Anne likes the, the erase game as just extra practice. That's, that's it, well said. Tara says it's a game ch changer, the blend as you read. Let's not do it the old segmented act way anymore. We have evidence from researchers that the connected continuous blending, blend as you read, is a um, game changer. In that article when they said they were surprised by how fast kids learn, it was about 20 minutes where, where they got them to a group of them to be successful. They hadn't been successful, they did these activities and they were reading three sound words, even nonsense words. Um, so that means they're really doing the decoding of the blending, blend as you read skill. So it's kind of interesting, most times, most of the time reading researchers, probably most researchers are very circumspect, they don't show a lot of emotion, but they said they were surprised by how fast. It's kind of a little bit of a, a little outburst of emotion. 
Jillian likes that this is engaging. That's true. The dry erase board is a little bit of the magic too. Allison, for me, using Blend As You Read was an aha moment for all of my struggling readers. Awesome. Oh, this is cool. Upstate Literacy Learning and Tutoring Center calls it Read Write Race and the kids love it. It's like a game to them. Cool. Adrienne, um, a huge boost in the favorite activity of a first grader I work with. I'll probably always squeeze in a word or two for the student even when sorted is more at the point of the pressing need. That's nice. So she's talking about our activity we're going to talk about next week sort it which is how to cope with advanced phonics like the long vowel and all its various spellings michael's making a great point i love how many times students get to work with the sounds and read the words so much repetition in practice awesome you guys thank you for sharing is anyone who not already experienced with this we'd love to know what do you think is it something you could try do you think it'll be useful I'd love to know. Maybe you can come back to this post or come or email us later and let us know. So now, if you haven't gotten these um, these lesson plans which we've released before, Greg, you can plop that link into the chat. All you have to do is come over here and click this to um, get a month of lesson plans for a beginning kindergartner and then a month for a beginning first grader and if you have an older kid you can probably see the progression and, and maybe pick up in the middle or near the end and because we move things along rapidly here at Reading Simplified so those are our gift to you and if you know someone who likes lesson plans I bet you do you might tag them or send them this our way so they can snag these thank you Greg that's in there Okay, so Stacy is so excited to try this. Yay, I'm really glad to hear that. Thank you for sharing. And so is Nicole. She says she's gonna try it for sure. Oops, where I made I missed your name, Nicole. There we go. Um, okay, so snag that freebie. And then <clears throat> just so you know, next week we're gonna be talking about the next most important activity we teach, another fast acting fix. This, this takes more than a few seconds, which is what all it takes really to do the decoding strategy blend as you read. This takes a little bit longer, but you can do this activity in as little as five minutes, for sure 10. You don't have to fill out the whole page. You can see these are some of Jennifer's kids from a, um, a couple years ago. They're doing team sorts, which, and we'll show an example of that, but how do you cope with kids who can't handle that O can be OA and OW and OE? How do they learn to read those words and how do they um, learn to um, to even know how to write them, spell them. All of that is part of the answer of sort it. So I'm excited to share that with you. And finally, don't forget, if you've never joined the Reading Simplified Academy and you want to learn more about read it and switch it and sort it, these core activities that are really fast acting fixes, then you have this opportunity to jump in, test us out here for just one month at $9.97 before it goes up to our discounted rate of 29. Normally we're $39 a month or 347 for the year. So this is a great value. Our hope is, of course, if you're in Australia or New Zealand or South Africa, you can, um, test this out and have many, many more months to see an impact. But for those of you who are in the you know, US, Canada, UK, you might test some of these things out before school ends and then um, take a break and then jump into this academy and see how this system works. Test it out over the summer so you can be confident to try something new as the new school year begins. So it's a little summer special PD. We're not going to be running it for very long. so. Um, keep watch on our on your email. We'll be letting all of our email um, subscribers know. Um, Angela is so excited to try this out tomorrow. I love that. So give. <laughs> so Sandy has a great question. I'd love for our Reading Simplified pros in the audience to give her some advice on this. We actually um, say throw the kids into the deep end with reading. And that by that, I, I don't mean anything dangerous. I just mean um, have them read real words, real words, real text, and have them build and spell real words 
And if they can't do much of anything besides maybe recognize one sound, then you do the rest. Model it, have them copy you, and point all along the way, and they will soon internalize more and more of this. So yes, Sandy, you can teach this before they know all of their individual letter sounds. We normally get kids to know about four or five letter sounds, and then they do an activity to switch it, which we taught last week. Um, where they might change sat to sit, and, or maybe not to sit because that's another vowel, but sat to mat and mat to pat and so on so that they start to um, learn how the alphabetic principle works, learn those letter sounds, and then we would go straight into doing read it. And yeah, maybe they don't know ah, yeah, and maybe they're sketchy on t, but that's okay. They say s, and then you say, what's the next sound? And they say, so you say, well, this is ah. Put those two, two sounds together. S, ah, what is it? And they go, sa. And when they have sa, and then they see that, they might be able to figure out that it's sat. If not, you just tell them, well, this is t. So try it again. You had sa, t. What's the word? Sat. So a high level of scaffold is great for our four-year-old, three-year-olds, four-year-olds, five-year-olds who don't know many letter sounds, but still get them into real reading. So they get how it works and there's more meaning to it and all things put together in an integrated way um, makes it come alive and helps them learn it more rapidly. So thank you so much for asking that question, Sandy. Wendy does love Switch It for building letter sound knowledge. And upstate literacy learning is the best way to teach kids to connect the sounds to letters. Are you talking about read it? She says along, or he or she says along with switch it, it's the best way to teach those sound symbol relationships. Okay, awesome you guys. All right, so if you got something out of today or you think one of your colleagues will, share this with them. Uh, invite them to come to our next one. Um, this one was on Wednesday because my daughter graduated from eighth grade yesterday. And, um, but normally we do this on Tuesday, 8 p.m. Eastern. So we, we learned about Rita today, but next week we're gonna talk about another fast acting fix. All that phonics information can be, can be much more easily learned with the activity sorted. So invite your friends and we'll have more winners. And don't forget, we also have this opportunity to jump into the Reading Simplified Academy at an unprecedented low rate. So thanks for being here. Here's to making great readers.